Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Fiona. Glad to have you on the podcast. Uh, Santi. Excellent. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Happy to be here, Fiona. Thank you. Um, so let's get started. Um, so let's paint a picture um, before we delve into the meat of the um, podcast. Um, Mark, you recently wrote an article um, where you po- your point of view was that Kenyans don't care much about privacy, but they care about not being surprised. What did you mean by that? Yeah, I think I was deliberately antagonizing people or trying to get a conversation going with the headline. Uh, and I remember even a part of it said, it's not like even what the constitution guarantees somebody the privacy. I wasn't ignoring or overlooking that. I was taking the fact that for the three of us, for anybody watching or listening to the podcast, mm-hmm. generally there's a disconnect or a paradox between what we say so I say, Fiona, what do you think about privacy? And mm-hmm. like, well, privacy is for everybody and I deserve my privacy. Yeah. You know, Jonathan, what's your thought on privacy? Well, you know what, for me, you know, my life is my life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like, you, then you have all these, these words we profess. And then if you look at our behavior, on the mm-hmm. other hand, mm-hmm. sometimes that doesn't line up the same way. There's a lot of conveniences. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of shortcuts. There's a lot of habits that we have. Mm-hmm. And there's an unwillingness to break that and truly buy into the concept of privacy, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. we love the convenience of paying with mobile money. Uh, but the surprise we don't like is when somebody, you know, SMSs us out of the blue or our phone number gets into a book. Mm-hmm. Coming into this building, I had to leave my details at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And I've even had some people who now say, oh, I'm really smart with it. You know what I do? Mm-hmm. I leave a number out of my ID or I change the number on my phone number. It's like, it's too late. Yeah. It's too late for that. Yeah. At this point, <laughs> unless, you, yeah, unless you go way, way back, yeah. if you have a credit card, a mm-hmm. bank account, a mobile phone mm-hmm. and a smartphone at that, mm-hmm. truthfully already, the concept of privacy is somewhat almost out the gate. Mm-hmm. And now what you're just hoping doesn't happen is that you're not surprised. So you have you know cctv at the home and mm-hmm. you're like i love that i can check it on my phone with the wi-fi well mm-hmm. that also means in some cases someone else can too mm-hmm. i have an alexa smart speaker in our living room i know that it's listening mm-hmm. but i also love that i can get the news sports updates just two commands and all my kids even our two-year-old knows how to play music on it which shocks me sometimes because mm-hmm. even with a little baby voice yeah. she she's there's music that she'll like when it's time for bed we have some lullabies or something like yeah. that and she'll say that and and these are the you know the conveniences we're trading mm-hmm. uh when you use the same pin number mm-hmm. on different places yeah. when you use the same password on different places uh truthfully if we want privacy the most extreme version is I'm going to go cash only. Mm. No bank account, no mobile money. Okay, not a lot of people ready to do that. Okay, I'm also going to, um, uh, if, if, I, if I was to say it, I'm, I'm ready to um, just really give rethink. Your, yeah, your phone. My, give up my phone entirely. Right? So now you can't reach me. I don't mm. have the convenience of Google Maps and everything else and traffic. Mm. But all of that is a give and take. So mm-hmm. truthfully, I think the concept, and it's not me, I think it came from uh, Seth Godin. I used uh, some of his thinking there is that what we don't want is we don't want to be surprised. But a lot of us are more than willing to trade it. And I think especially in Kenya and this part of the world, mm-hmm. some people actually trade it for as part of their survival mm-hmm. uh, for that un, uh, un, un, unsecured loan. Mm-hmm. I have to provide my call history, my location, my SMSs, the nest of the apps in my phone, what I do with my data. I don't know that I'm signing up to all of that. Yeah. But by downloading that loan app, I, I do that. In mm-hmm. fact, if I could give them more data somehow to get a higher loan limit, I would do that. Mm-hmm. So that's the paradox of privacy in my view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, Jonathan, you you know have something to add there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, We had Rahab, um, Rahab Juma from the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner. Um, she's the Inspection and Compliance Manager. And um, she spoke of the challenge of introducing privacy in a cultural setting where privacy is not widespread. Mm. Um, And she even mentioned that it doesn't even have a specific word in a lot of our vernacular. Um, What are your thoughts on this? Just building on, you know, what Mark said. What Mark said, yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things, I mean, which is very correct, I think the the whole element about surprise Mm -hmm. is what we don't want. Mm. Um, The information that you share is out there Mm -hmm. uh, or the information that you share within whatever context it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, the catch becomes what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. And that's where the surprise comes from. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, there's no element of uh, definition of privacy in our cultural context for most people, but it's actually the practice of privacy Mm -hmm. by how people behave, 
uh, by how people uh, talk. For example, um, I know in our culture we've got a saying that says uh, the matters of the family are only discussed within the home. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's recognition. There's, there are matters for public, there are matters for private. So mm-hmm. the definition may not be there, but the practice is there. Um, so I think now with with maybe the implementation of um, um, laws around privacy is maybe because the volume of what is available has increased mm-hmm. and uh, people who've got access to it has increased. Therefore, the elements of surprise are many. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, what the watchman could do with the details I gave downstairs yes. would lead to surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe then they're not going to send me M-Pesa and tell me, oh, we've sent the airtime for today because you came to um, Capital FM. That's not gonna, I mean, that's a good surprise, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah, it's probably misuse that causes us now to be a bit wary mm-hmm. around where data sits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe even just something quickly to build on that, and I think, you know, you'd spoken about this uh, previously, Jonathan, where... Um, one of the challenges, uh, and I know you've done a study on this, and I'd love for you to say something on it, but I remember um, just learning how Truecaller, right, this this app that essentially tells you who's calling even if you don't have their number, mm-hmm. and there's both pros and cons, but one of the ones I remember seeing was that uh, there's some work of theirs that we, were, we came across where they were particularly working with e-commerce vendors, mm-hmm. in, and particularly women, mm-hmm. because there would be men acting as prospective customers mm-hmm. um, and even going sometimes as far as to inquire, etc., only to get this lady's details and then mm-hmm. harass her or send unsolicited, mm-hmm. you know, messages and images and things of that nature. And so there's a type of almost cyber harassment that comes by surprise mm-hmm. when you're there saying this is the business shop front mm-hmm. um, and, and, you know, we're all business here, but the surprise comes in because you've, you've allowed a very some somewhat public private information which is my phone number mm. yeah uh, there's even times we've seen politicians share the phone number mm-hmm. of another prominent public figure mm-hmm. and that has raised all sorts of questions but mm. yeah i'd love for you maybe it, to it, reflect I mean, on what does, you yeah. found um mm. and the study was about uh, just look at the bottom of the pyramid um and um they use or interaction with digital payments mm-hmm. so what you find that um is especially for women um, they're not going to use digital payments to be able to pay to either vendors they do not know mm-hmm. um, or uh, in some particular types of outlet. Why? Mm-hmm. Because by doing so, I've actually been able to share my number. My number in most cases for us is your identity. Mm-hmm. And the harassment that comes through both in terms of calling, texts, or even images mm-hmm. becomes something that amounts to harassment. Mm-hmm. So what you find is that they would rather not then engage, mm-hmm. meaning now that we're excluding them from payment solutions because mm-hmm. of the element of data protection, we excluded them or they say okay maybe let me have uh, my husband pay mm-hmm. because uh, i mean <laughs> he's not gonna have be harassed yeah um yeah. become the needed solution for them to so they, they're coping they're finding a way to cope mm-hmm. around the fact that there are no guidelines or ways to be able to protect them mm-hmm. um around people who may be excluded mm-hmm. from uh, the tenets of uh data protection law as it is today mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah wow and i think um you i think you'll also both of you will touch on you know the cost of privacy mm. you know is it for everyone and and so on um so we'll definitely delve into that um so just as marketing pr- practitioners um you know we recently had the data protection act passed in in kenya in mm. 2019 um what is your view on the kenya data protection act um is it timely do you feel it's comprehensive when it's compared to similar acts globally mm-hmm. um what's your view mark yeah i think that I mean, I like to zoom out to sort of the marketer's role <laughs> without privacy in the picture, which is, you know, uh, my aim here is to, you know, reach somebody with hopefully a memorable message of some kind mm-hmm. that's distinctive enough to create, you know, a memory structure mm-hmm. in the mind of, of a person uh, so that, that they are a little more likely to buy my brand, product or service when they're in a buying situation. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the core of hopefully why the existence of marketers is there. Mm-hmm. And then for non-profit, you know, marketers or social marketers and others, it's for some sort of impact or perception mm-hmm. or behavior change. Mm-hmm. Now, I think when you're looking at the data, you know, Privacy Protection Act and, and what it signifies is... The heart of it, I think one of the, the, the biggest areas which has been the source of surprise is consent. Mm-hmm. I did not consent. That's why it's a surprise mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. because I did not say that just because I paid for my shopping bill with mobile money mm-hmm. that I consented to a lifetime mm-hmm. of messages. Yeah. And for me, I don't mean to put, I think, like shopping organizations on the spot, 
but I'm like, I'm probably gonna visit you anyway. Exactly. Mm. You're yeah. not gonna yeah. send me a message that makes me come today or open the app. Yeah. Or come any faster. Yeah. Any faster. <laughs> when it runs out, I'll be there. Yeah. If I miss the deal, so be it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the surprise of the messages is the challenge, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now what they'll say is they're doing direct marketing. Mm-hmm. I think one of the best parts of the um no, Data Privacy Act is is how it formalizes consent. Mm-hmm. I think it does set a higher bar for marketers mm-hmm. uh, because I think marketers, for some time, one of the hopes I have with it is that for some time we found that what is a lot more straightforward is very tactical, sales-oriented messaging. Mm-hmm. And so that's the place you play it safe. Why? You see the paybacks immediately, mm-hmm. right? The CFO, the business sale, this quarter sales up. Well, that's because we hammered offers and sent out the direct messaging and went and gave out the flyers, mm-hmm. everything in the trenches. Mm-hmm. For me, what I hope this challenges marketers to do mm-hmm. is also appeal at the brand and emotional level. Mm-hmm. The problem of that is most you know, chief marketing officers you know, heads of brand, they don't stick around long enough for the paybacks. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, why are we doing this thing? Where's the mm-hmm. call to action? I'm not yeah. seeing the bottom line in this quarter's mm-hmm. results. Yeah. And so I think if there's any hope I have, it's that. Mm-hmm. But I'd say compared to GDPR, um, I think the European Union was already very advanced mm-hmm. and they need a, a lot of respect. The US is very free and liberal. It's mm-hmm. only certain states. I think I was looking, California mm-hmm. has done, you know, very progressive laws, but yeah. there are others which are I mean, they're rolling back all sorts of laws. So mm-hmm. even the U.S., mm-hmm. as great as it is, is not exactly the place mm-hmm. to look. So I think we have something pretty progressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as um, as I'm sure Jonathan will add, it's down to the implementation and it's down to what the total cost of compliance looks like for us mm-hmm. while making it very understandable yeah. and palatable at the grassroots most mm-hmm. of all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, to add on to that, I think, uh, one, is it timely? Yes. Why? Because I guess we are in an information age. Mm-hmm. Because um, I think right now in terms of the volume of information we are collecting on an individual from different points mm-hmm. is numerous. I'm, I'm sure by the time I get back to the office, I'll be asked to review how was your time at this particular building or mm-hmm. we noticed that you're near Ajaba around this part of town. Mm-hmm. The information we're collecting per individual from different sources is yeah. a lot. So yeah. volume, mm-hmm. speed. Yeah. The speed around which it's been collected and being shared and being passed across wherever mm-hmm. uh, is quite high. Yeah. So there's a place to actually be able to have laws that guide that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a bit of a catch-up game, mm-hmm. um, especially in, in light of what's happening in Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd find that, um, I guess, for um, if you've got clients working out of Europe, the implementation of this probably happened before even we enacted our act. Uh, to be able to implement this, yeah. uh, meaning there are places where it was actually being carried out and you're probably complying to that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yes, it's timely, yes, it's needed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, with the, inf- uh, with the amount of information that's there, the mm-hmm. next thing is uh, what are people going to do with it? Element of surprise. So, uh, we do analytics mm-hmm. where um, we do market research, we do uh, data analytics, we look at the different points. Mm-hmm. And by looking at different points, back to what Mark was saying, mm-hmm. um, I can get, for example, your shopping data at your favorite supermarket yeah. and I can be able to analyze and even tell which days you come, mm-hmm. uh, where you come and then on those particular days I'll be able to make an offer only for you yeah. that allows you to be able to spend a thousand shillings more than you plan to spend, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now, it may be good because now you had not thought about it but my analysis had thought about it for you mm-hmm. and made you buy it yeah. but the question is, did you give me permission to be able to go that route? Yeah. yeah? So I guess now it comes to uh, what do the laws do? Mm-hmm. They allow you to opt in to be able to have your information used. Yeah. How much it's used? Yeah. Who's using it? Mm-hmm. So, timely, yes. Um, good for us, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Just to build on that as well, you know, mm-hmm. we talked about, um, you know, it's about the consent side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what other areas of the act do you applaud? Mm. Um, and which do you feel, you know, need to be reviewed, even though the act has already been passed, mm-hmm. of course, it's going to evolve you know, as we get to know more and more and as we, as we implement yeah. um, the act. But uh, what other areas do you applaud and what do you feel we okay. need re-looking at? Yeah, uh, I think in terms of what, um, first of all, do you applaud, of course, it's um, the fact that um, now the, the consumer is, uh, or the person sharing data has got a bit more transparency mm-hmm. around the fact that data has been collected. Mm. Uh, they've got a bit more information around what's the data being used for, so they've been informed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in fact, what we do within um, our practice is, because now we'll come to you and probably you're doing a survey in your, in your neighborhood or through the phone and want to know about your toothpaste habits. Mm-hmm. But I'll have to come and tell you, by the way, this is me, this is what we're doing, mm-hmm. and this information we want to collect from you, 
for this particular purpose. Yeah. Would you want us to proceed? Mm-hmm. So now at least you know exactly uh, what information you're giving and why you're giving it. Yeah. So the fact that you've got informed consent that is passed on, mm-hmm. then we'll tell you um, how long we're going to hold your data mm-hmm. because it's not for it's not for eternity. Yeah. So we got to um, again give context to that, mm-hmm. and then we'll also give you the option. Um, like if it's, the survey is going to take 15 minutes, we'll tell you. But there's somewhere anywhere in between the survey you can opt out. Mm-hmm. So the element of even being able to opt out gives you a bit more power yeah. to the person who's caught the information. Yeah. And um, at some point also we um, have a limit to how much we can use the information. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think all those particular elements of the build also allow people to. Um, um, or at least information uh, give us to be able to be sure mm-hmm. that they're not being taken advantage of. Yeah. Because it's very easy to uh, come, do a survey around uh, a particular table, go out, and then be able to speak about what you did, mm-hmm. and specifically about, I spoke to Mark, and Mark is, uh, this type of individual has got a family, mm-hmm. he spent this amount of money, yeah. and to reach him, you've got to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. Right? But we don't have Mark's consent to do that. Yeah. Yeah? So in that particular case, we're infringing on his... Right. Mm-hmm. So elements of consent, uh, how long you can use data, how long you can keep data, mm-hmm. and the fact that uh, you and I mm-hmm. have got an opportunity to be able to opt out mm-hmm. uh, and say, okay, stop using my data from now on, I'm, 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 I've had enough. Yeah. Um, that, that I think those are beautiful elements of uh, the law that you can complement. Mm. What needs to be added? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it needs to be a bit more interaction with um, the full implementation of, mm-hmm. um, um, of the data privacy uh, laws. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's from implementation that you start uh, figuring out where it pinches. Mm-hmm. And based on where it pinches, yeah. um, then you'll be able to um, figure adjust. out okay, what we adjust. Yeah. So for us, as uh, I mean, for now, within the marketing fraternity, I think we're still at the part of fitting the shoe. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess there are people who fitted the shoe and it's fitting perfectly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I would think about organizations like churches. Mm-hmm. Is it working for them, for example, or um, religious organizations? Religious organization the, the transport industry, mm-hmm. for example, how they're implementing the very same thing. Yeah. So until we figure out at what point and how does it fit for each particular sector, mm-hmm. then we can then talk about adjustments. For now, I think the the the, um, the imperative is to probably probably just start with let's implement the main principles mm-hmm. and then from there figure out what uh, needs to adjustment and yeah. when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. That's mm. so true. And in terms of implementation, you know, you both run um, amazing organizations and you work with different clients. Um, So I'm sure, you know, you also need to be compliant. So I'd be interested to know, you know, at what point of implementation is your organization and how has the journey been, you know, speaking to the implementation side of things, you know, specifically for your organizations? Maybe Mark, you can... um, Sure, yeah, I I, I, I think... There's, I think, for us where you know we're clearly going to handle people's data. So the classification for us is a data controller. Mm-hmm. I think what I found refreshing is having several industry bodies from I think the Market and Social Research Association (MSRA), mm-hmm. where Jonathan is a board member, or uh, Nakosti and others, where there's there's a concerted effort mm-hmm. to provide some clarity. Because in mm-hmm. principle, what you could do is walk through the front door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is I could go to the ODPC and I think I went through our lawyer and I was like, okay, who's going to be our data protection officer? Mm-hmm. And just going through this checklist, but finding that there's also industry bodies also providing some guidance has been mm-hmm. quite helpful okay. because that's what member-based organizations are supposed mm-hmm. to do is, is provide their members mm-hmm. that guidance and that, that, uh, that, that insight. That said, I think something interesting on the previous point that... Um, uh, that Jonathan was just rounding out, and this is more of a client illustration. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've had the opportunity to work with Safaricom, for instance, for a number of years on uh, social media listening. Mm-hmm. And that's just finding when people mention you and don't mention you, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, when they're talking amongst themselves about you, mm-hmm. and they have deliberately not tagged you. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. They, they aren't expecting you to respond. And then there's the times they'll come to you directly. Yeah. And I think it's been interesting over the years to watch people voice concerns around privacy, mm-hmm. particularly as they get surprises, mm-hmm. because now they're coming on a public platform. And before even the law was there, because we've been there since uh, I think it was like 2017, um, thereabouts, all the way till now, mm-hmm. doing a whole myriad of reports and analyzing like hundreds of millions of, because you can imagine, a lot mm-hmm. of people have things to say about M-Pesa. Yeah. You mentioned that till number, yeah. that's an M-Pesa sort of product mm-hmm. or Safaricom related product. Mm-hmm. So capturing all of this and analyzing when does it need a response, when does it not? Mm-hmm. And and something interesting there was just the perception that I've had an infraction and a surprise and I don't want to call it a conspiracy theory, but this thinking that you no know, somebody inside, you know, this mm-hmm. firm mm-hmm. has done something. Mm-hmm. When it's when it's factually inaccurate, right? Where they are, for example, um uh 
you know sort of uh, SMS and and mar- mobile marketing service providers mm-hmm. what are called PRSP P- premium rate service providers mm-hmm. and many of them now operate in this middle ground mm-hmm. between the regulator the telco and the customer mm-hmm. right and they're the ones who actually keep the databases mm-hmm. the actual firms themselves hardly do that mm-hmm. that much they just regulate and and are part of the revenue share which is now where people take issue with them mm-hmm. but i think this question of I think recently Safaricom, for example, made it to where when you pay certain vendors using their API, mm-hmm. they'll remove a few of your digits. Just that small little mm. change means that there's fewer surprises. Yeah. The payment is received, yeah. but not necessarily the full string mm-hmm. in order for now follow on messages to go. That needs to be, as Jonathan was saying, opted in. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a way where, and the reason I mentioned Safaricom, it's true for Airtel and Telcom, mm-hmm. their phone number here. Mm-hmm. I mean, and this is why for some people, they get so scared if they, they're in the diaspora, they travel, mm-hmm. and they're like, how do I keep this line active? Because mm-hmm. I would never want someone else to get this line. Yeah. My banking is tied to this line. Uh, my ID card is tied to this line. Mm-hmm. I have certain people who must reach me on this line. Yeah. So I think even there's a form of both privacy and semi-public mm-hmm. where the phone number is such a critical document. Mm-hmm. It's part of your mobile wallet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's separate to your bank account. So I mm-hmm. think at that level, there's even for the ODPC, mm-hmm. I think the bulk of things will relate to do with the phone mm-hmm. and maybe not even as many other places too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, for us, um, we got a certificate. Yeah. <laughs> we actually, yes, exactly. So Process we got, our controller. Uh, we actually, um, the officer that we were dealing with when we applied online, okay. uh, told us to apply for processor mm. given the volume of work we were doing and how that volume of work was coming to us okay. mm. and the information being passed on to us by client mm-hmm. to be able to do the work we're doing, mm. uh, which is information around uh, things like contacts, for example. Mm. Mm-hmm. So we've got a certificate for, uh, we are data processors. Okay. Um, we didn't actually use anybody. We actually went through the website okay. and then from there, they, the support was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, they mm-hmm. tell you, okay, this uh, help us understand a bit better about what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, we explain to them, then they come back and say, okay, apply for this particular mm-hmm. one. We apply. Mm-hmm. Okay, you need to add this. Mm-hmm. Show us how you're going to be able to be storing your data or how mm-hmm. you're currently storing your data. Oh, wow. okay. So, I mean, the process I must say was... Um, I mean, it was, it was smooth. Mm-hmm. Smooth in the sense that uh, you knew what the next step was mm-hmm. or you knew what your gaps were mm-hmm. before they could actually be able to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think from that particular perspective, mm-hmm. um, I must say at least from the part of interacting with their website, mm-hmm. that works. Yeah. Um, okay. was, awesome. Which is good. Mm. Um, but I guess also in terms of maybe the... Um, uh, the overlap between controller and processor, mm-hmm. I think that is um, still one to be able to just figure out how that works. Yeah. Um, for especially for us who are collecting data, or doing market research mm. and social research. Yeah. Um, so because there are clients who come to you and tell you, would like you to find out for us how many people, for example, are consuming this particular brand. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have directed what needs to be done and mm-hmm. work with this database. Mm-hmm. So in, in that particular case, you're working as a processor. Yeah. But there are places also where you're saying, okay, I need to be able to conduct a research to find out how people are consuming billboards. Mm-hmm. So you are the controller yes. of the information you're collecting. Yeah. So just figuring out um, what becomes the best way mm-hmm. to have an encompassing, mm-hmm. um, uh, at least um, one or another, which, which one do you take yeah. for people within an industry? Mm-hmm. Um, I think as uh, Mark mentioned as well, I think one of the things we're doing also as an industry mm-hmm. that deals with uh, data, that deals with insights, mm-hmm. is uh, not doing it individually, mm-hmm. uh, it's just doing it collectively. Yeah. Uh, figuring out, okay, because if I've made any mistakes mm-hmm. as Frontier Consulting, mm-hmm. uh, it shouldn't be the same mistake that you're doing or Mark is doing. Mm-hmm. So how do we ensure that, um, uh, that we get almost uh, as, as I do with KRA, mm-hmm. how do you get a ruling um, mm-hmm. that works for your industry? Mm-hmm. And um, to what you mentioned earlier, then we have another body that regulates us, which is, um, um, it's called Nacosti. Okay. And how do they also marry and mm-hmm. read to each other, mm-hmm. such that when we are applying for your annual permits to conduct research across Kenya, mm-hmm. it's somehow tied in together. So you're not mm-hmm. body one, body two, yeah. body three, mm. in terms of our compliances. Yeah. I mean, back to the ease of doing business, how do you ensure some of these things are speaking to each other? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I must say we've got the certificate. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. For two years though. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 we, years, yeah. yeah. Um, in our, in the, the part one of this series, we yeah. had uh, Rahab, who yeah. talked about, you know, why it's two years mm-hmm. and, and so on. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting, you know, to hear you know that perspective why they've done it for two years yeah that's an interesting point that you you know mentioned about the two-year duration um when we had rehab here from the odpc Mm. she did talk about that um you know in the part one of this uh, data privacy episode um 
essentially she broke it down as to why they're doing the two year. I think it was around, you know, making sure that, you know, the checks uh, are still in place, the, you know, all the compliance things are still in place um, and so on. But uh, I mean, but also to me, if you make it too short as well, I mean, it becomes, becomes too tedious a task that you're doing every other year. Mm -hmm. And especially for, for, for entities or, mm -hmm. or businesses, then, um, then you're focusing more on compliance mm. your first half of the year or your first whatever. That's true. Uh, I think there's a place to even make it even three years, I mean, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, just ensure that at least the checkpoints within the three years around are you still compliant on what you need to be able to do are mm. still in place. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's a great suggestion. I think as we, you know, we've talked earlier, mm. as we implement this, we'll get to understand, you know, where the kinks exactly. that need to be improved. And, mm. you know, definitely I'm sure the ODPC will be happy to hear feedback from mm. those who need to comply. Um, I just wanted to uh, delve in on that point again, just around implementation in, in your organization. You, know, you talked about getting the certificate, mm -hmm. um, and you also talked about you know getting a, someone to help you mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. In terms of like the, the structures within your teams, you know, what conversations have you had with your teams mm -hmm. to let them know like, hey, this, we're, we now need to be compliant. You know, maybe just an example, you know, for our listeners who are trying to figure it out in their organizations. Yes, you've done the application for the certificate. What else happens within your team okay. members? Okay. Yeah. All right, I could, I could start off. Um, <coughs> let me tell you, Fiona. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> one of the things we do is, um, if you look at if you break down our processes for uh, data collection, you've got the input part. Mm -hmm you got the processing part and then you got the output. Output is mostly the presentation to client mm -hmm. uh, or sharing of deliverables. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could be a presentation on, on PowerPoint or whatever, or it could be deliverable of data mm -hmm. or uh, audios or videos. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the input. I think with input, first of all, uh, it starts from training. Mm -hmm. When you're training our teams around uh, projects that we're doing and how we're collecting data, mm -hmm. uh, we bring in young people or um, a different profile of people to be interviewers. Mm -hmm. So I think our awareness around uh, uh, the whole part around data protection starts right there. Mm. So part of our training around covers um, the whole issue about um, consent, uh, about um, ensuring that you've explained what you're doing, um, ensuring that the, the, the respondent, as much as you've been paid for the number of interviews you do, mm -hmm. has an opportunity to be able to opt out. So mm -hmm. that's that's part of it in terms of the people part, mm -hmm. in terms of input, mm -hmm. the design of the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, design of the tool also makes sure we're collecting information first of all that we need for me to be able to analyze. Mm -hmm. So I may not need your name but I need probably your age and maybe need to know your marital status. Mm -hmm. I may need to know how many kids you have, for example. Um, I think once you expunge the name, mm -hmm. then the data is anonymous mm -hmm. uh, from there. So again, we keep it to a minimum of what we need to collect from you. Yeah. So you don't have to collect everything. Okay, what's what's your birth certificate number? What is your total lead number? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't need all that. Yeah. So minimizing what we need to be able to collect from you. Mm -hmm. Part of the input process as well is in the, um, uh, what you call scripting or the design of the tool that's collecting the data. Mm -hmm. So um, again, that ensures that, for example, you cannot continue the questionnaire until you've uh, gotten consent mm -hmm. uh, from the respondent. Mm -hmm. Then from there, the questionnaire can proceed. Okay. Now, uh, how do we know we've gotten consent? So what happens is, because um, uh, you, you click to get consent, mm -hmm. but what you do is, since you collect most of our data using um, uh, tablets and Android phones, mm -hmm. is that when you script it, you actually script it to capture the audio when the consent has been asked. Mm, okay, um, okay. So it doesn't capture the introduction. My name is Jonathan. What is your name? So it doesn't capture that part that mm -hmm. identifies the person by name. Mm -hmm. But it covers now the explanation of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then when the consent is given, the audio can be heard mm -hmm. by a third party. Yeah. Right? So that's, that's, that's in the design of the tool that's collecting. Mm -hmm. And of course, it goes ahead and um, also when it comes to recording, we record as much as we uh, we need or sometimes we call the full interview. Mm -hmm. When it comes to processing, I guess we process data that's anonymous, mm -hmm. meaning that we've removed all names mm -hmm. or all ways of being able to identify you. So we may uh, we remove all names from the front end. Yeah. We also remove the GPS location from the back end mm -hmm. because I may not. I mean, I mean, I, know, I may know. For example, you're 18 years old. Mm -hmm. These were uh, these are family size, and I've got an exact. Uh, GPS location mm -hmm. to five meters mm -hmm. of where I took the interview from. If that's your house, yeah. then I can be able to identify you. Mm -hmm. So we remove the back end and uh, the front end, yeah. so you're left with just pure data. Yeah. So that's now the processing. You process that. We present to clients, and um, now when you present to clients again, you're presenting anonymized data. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are, um, say, for example, if it's this conversation you're having, if you to do um, a text transcript of this, uh, it won't show, for example, um, Jonathan, Mark, Fiona speaking each every time. No, it'll just show uh, participant one, two, and then the moderator as Fiona. So mm -hmm. then that way you've anonymized. So if it's, even if it's been read in China, mm -hmm. they can't be able to identify that the respondent was Mark. But the information that Mark gave, mm -hmm. which is what they're interested in, 
the right in there. In there. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of how uh, we implement our processes. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Did you want to add on to that? Yeah. Sure. I think. I think for us, uh, there's on the research side, and I think he's covered that pretty well. Maybe the side for us that that we find is quite interesting is search and social media and the web mm -hmm. because now you have this information and part of it is is used in a marketing sense to target mm -hmm. so you know you could target me by my age by the type of device i have by the mobile phone network i'm on mm -hmm. by to some lesser degree some of the sites that i like to browse mm -hmm. and the places i like to frequent online and so all of those are sort of qualifiers that then you know, sort of the, the, the way of, of, of research in this sense is seeing, okay, what what are the other sites? And you've often seen sometimes on e-commerce sites, um, there's, you know, recommendations, which are in themselves, you know, when you talk about an algorithm, mm -hmm. a form of research which says, uh, customers like you also bought this. Mm -hmm. Or uh, or people were also browsing at this. Mm -hmm. Or these two go together. In yeah. fact, here's a special deal at this time. Mm -hmm. So I think often... Uh, for us, we're trying to get just about enough, uh, either with sort of the targeting. Sometimes we're even running campaigns, not necessarily to, to actually run the campaign, but for the amount of data, it'll help you validate mm -hmm. uh, with an online campaign in particular, mm -hmm. just about device habits and, and how we use our phones. Mm -hmm. And then on social media, I think because you've given your uh, consent in a way to Twitter, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to Facebook, and then they, in, in large part, you know, would never let um, us or anyone else either coming through what's called the API, which mm -hmm. is which is how you you essentially write a script that will call on certain information. But there's um, uh, it it wouldn't allow you to access anything that's not public. So on Facebook, there's many settings you can have, for instance, and one of them is friends only. One is only me. Mm -hmm. You can then use Facebook as a private diary if you want mm -hmm. it. But the highest of those is public. And so if you're on a page of a corporation, a company, uh, that's public. Mm -hmm. If you're in a group, that's public. Mm -hmm. it, it's a public group where all posts are classified as public. It can be sort of listened or analyzed to. Yeah. Um, and then on Twitter, it's sort of public by design. Unless you, don't, you have a private profile, mm -hmm. every, everything is there. And that for us is an area where sometimes people are like, oh, but, you know, that's my tweet in your presentation. Yes, it is mm -hmm. because, you know, I have a, an agreement in terms of the, the way I access Twitter to, to capture information from there. And mm -hmm. you're not a registered user who chose mm -hmm. to publish on there. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's sort of those questions. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, at least for us, we're just listening. We're not doing more than that. But in some cases, we'll anonymize, similar to what you said. Mm -hmm. This is the information of the tweet or the Facebook or mm -hmm. online update. And we're going to remove the person's name and blur that and mm -hmm. the timestamp, etc. Any identifiable mm -hmm. bits, mm -hmm. but use the keywords and just the contents therein mm -hmm. to, to view. And in fact, you can do this visually too, mm -hmm. where uh, we're at this table and I and I take a photo. I haven't exactly written or said anything to do with Johnny, but, but this label um, with what's called optical character recognition mm -hmm. uh, in the camera can be identified. Mm -hmm. And so with what's called computer vision, we can know that it was seen here. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then how many times was this tweet or this online update seen? So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite interesting, I think, on that side. Mm -hmm. And maybe I think the, the, the last part for me is with marketing, mm -hmm. where if I take the example of real estate, um, someone is making a big life purchase, you know, a house, a home, or an apartment or something to that effect for either investment mm. or for their own, uh, you know, for them to live in. And there's a long journey there. Mm -hmm. And so at the beginning, part of the way we look at it, uh, you know, at Nendo with some of the campaigns we'll run, at least in this sector, we've done a fair bit here is there's what we call a sales qualified lead mm. and a marketing qualified lead. A marketing qualified lead is just somebody who meets a broad criteria, mm -hmm. age, you know, gender, just some of the areas mm -hmm. that you know, Jonathan was mentioning, high level, even without your name or like, okay, potentially even career. Mm -hmm. And some of that you can figure out through online marketing to a lesser degree. Mm -hmm. And then all you're just trying to get them to do is download the brochure. Mm -hmm. And that brochure, I just need your first name or just a name, hopefully an email, maybe a phone number. The more, as Jonathan said, the, the more fields you add, <laughs> the less someone is likely to actually give you that info. Yeah. But with that, all we're saying is, you take our brochure mm. and we'll be in touch in a few months or weeks mm. just to help. Yeah. A sales qualified lead is somebody saying, I'm ready for the site visit. Mm. I want to go see. Yeah. That's somebody who's saying, I, I, I need a date. Yeah. I'll give you all that info, but I need a date to come mm. because I want to see it, walk around. Mm. And already just on these to this one, there's a whole sort of like a journey of different messages to nurture them. Mm. You're not putting a lot of pressure on them. 
maybe past a certain couple of months, maybe you test them with initial site visit prompts. Mm-hmm. But this now somebody has opted in. Mm. Uh, and then with this one, oh, like this one, you're, you're asking the salespeople to just see how they build a relationship. Mm. See where this person is at. Are they bought before? Is it their first time? Yeah. And so it's a very concerted effort, but it has an element there of, mm. of the data and just coordinating to achieve what's hopefully the eventual sale. And that could mm. be a year from now. Mm. Yeah. So the journey of com- of you know compliance and implementation you know takes you know different forms you know through training mm. um, through the way you design your marketing how you design your analysis how you design your presentations um, and I know you you know also talked about you know um, engaging um, external parties mm. I know you mentioned you went straight to the website the ODPC website mm. and you found that fairly easy to. Um, to follow through, yeah. To follow through and get mm. the help you needed. Mm. Um, Mark, you highlighted, you know, tapping into organizations mm-hmm. um, that helped you to understand what needs to be done. Mm. Um, when it comes to your clients, you know, you handle different clients, you know, who have different um, levels of awareness about data privacy, um, different data requirement needs. Um, you know, how are your clients faring with the adoption of the Data Protection Act? Um, what challenges have they voiced to mm. you? Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, how have our clients been able to um, um, take all this? I guess uh, I, I'll categorize both uh, in terms of our local clients and also um, like international clients. So mm-hmm. uh, let's start with international clients. I think when it comes to international clients based in markets where the implementation of this is way ahead of Kenya, uh, we see that actually we are the ones who are playing um, catch up. I mean, there are some deliverables, for example, we send or processes that say no, no that has got to be compliant to, um, especially um, clients coming out of Europe. Um, and uh, they've actually been able to enable us to be more compliant even before, as I mentioned earlier, before the law came into place. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they can't receive data in a particular format because, um, I mean, that's a risk to them. Mm-hmm. Um, the law on their part is very clear, for example, that data has got to become uh, anonymized. They want names on any of the data we send them mm-hmm. um, or um, how we send them the data has got to be in a way that it's secure. Mm-hmm. Um, so they provide us um, the links or they assess our links first mm-hmm. uh, to confirm they're secure enough to be able to send. Yeah. So the international clients, I think, are, I would say, are pretty much ahead of the game um, in terms of uh, understanding and implementation. And for them, it's, 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 it's a way of doing business for them. It's not, it's not something they have to think about um, as they do business. It's, mm-hmm. it's now become part and parcel and ingrained into their processes. Mm-hmm. When it comes to local clients, I guess, um, now we see a bit of variation. There are those who are aware mm-hmm. and implementing, there are those who are not. There are mm-hmm. people who, for example, um, client A will come and say, I'd like you to speak to um, um, our customers and find out whether they'll be able to notice a campaign that we're running. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, um, well, well, I'm, I'm emailing you their database. I'm like no 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 wait 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 let's 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 first sign um, a couple of documents and disclosure let's mm-hmm. confirm um, what's show me the fields or tell us what the fields are contained there mm-hmm. so you only give me what I need yes. do not give me for example um, this is this is Mark this is his age this is his shoe size I, I mean the, the information I don't need there I just yeah. need his telephone number yeah. and maybe his first name mm-hmm. and then the next thing we tell them to do is also um, write to them now these are now the, the data controllers mm-hmm. write to them or send a text to each of your people on the database you're sending mm-hmm. and tell them um, someone from Frontier Consulting will be calling them mm-hmm. that's informing them of what you're going to do yeah uh, and then eventually then uh, when you send do not send to all the five people copied on the send to Jonathan mm-hmm. and then Jonathan will be able to figure out how to disseminate it to the, uh, right the people, people within his team mm-hmm. because again also you may have done all that and mm-hmm. then you send it to the same 15 people on the email list yeah. and you don't know how each and every person is and then um, even having some of those things um, protect with a password mm-hmm. just for, uh, to ensure at least only one person has got the password mm-hmm. and that's the person who's carrying it yeah. so local um, clients they're getting up to speed um, international clients are already there mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. What about for you, Mark? How are your clients faring? Are they well-versed or still need a lot of awareness? Or what's been your experience? Yeah, I'd say that, that I I don't have these conversations as often mm-hmm. as I would expect to. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly if I think of the marketing side. I think the marketing side is, you know, some people say, all oh, gas, no brakes, let's go. You mm-hmm. know, the economy is what it is. Let's 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 generate awareness or sales or leads. And, mm-hmm. and that's like, our number one objective. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it, it, it's then, as Jonathan says, now on us to advise, to guide, mm-hmm. and 
to inform and at least for us just based on the research side we can at least recommend a few things because mm-hmm. it's true sometimes you're saying okay okay who CRM is this form going into are mm-hmm. we building it where we will be handling these people's data mm-hmm. or ideally are we building let's say the landing page and then connecting to your you know customer relationship management tool mm-hmm. and therefore there's a there's a there's a straight sort of push in there we can maybe if you give us access to your tool mm-hmm. but then the, we are basic we're not even an intermediary at that point we're attracting traffic in a way of saying or leads mm-hmm. and um and then they're they're getting straight to you and we you then give us access to do more mm-hmm. um because even with a client the other day i was talking about a uh, concept online known as look alike audiences which mm-hmm. says that if you give me the last 100 people that bought mm-hmm. um and you give me their phone numbers or their email addresses mm-hmm. I can get on a uh, you know Google or Facebook and I can say give me look alike to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So give me uh and I honestly it, it figures itself out. So it'll figure either people based on their behavior or mm-hmm. on their background and then may run ads mm-hmm. where it's trying to guesstimate you know because it's not an exact science but who is like this mm. just behaviorally yeah. uh but yeah there's some questions there exactly what John <laughs> said about mm. who am i how am i handling that at what yeah. point am i expunging that mm. frankly people do not know that that's happening mm. i didn't really opt into that mm. but the, the it's one of the features that you know facebook and google and and other online advertising platforms present because mm. what they're saying is well it turns out those people are already on our platforms anyway mm. and all we want to do again is is if you have you know a uh, thousand shillings and you're spending you know 400 on traditional media and you know on like 300 on out of home we're just trying to get a little bit of what's left and trying mm-hmm. to expand that a bit because we know in some sectors that you will still have your out of home you mm-hmm. have print i think diageo a lot of uh, digital and i think the the mix that way that i said mm-hmm. I think in last season was was uh and it's because of the watershed and other things too but mm-hmm it's it's a digital and um and out of home mm-hmm. as sort of the, and obviously they do a lot on experiential we don't need to mm-hmm. go there but mm-hmm. but these are now some of the, the aspects you're thinking about mm-hmm. just when you're driving demand who's handling the data there yeah. and are you at least just orchestrating or or supporting without handling because i exactly mm-hmm. what done said the second you start handling yeah. is when are you a controller are you a processor mm-hmm. and and then when do you recuse yourself and how i think mm-hmm. for us with some clients they've been surprised we are we are shutting our if if a project ends we're shutting the door on the way out because some people just hang around mm-hmm. right they're still admins on we have some 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 checks we do and some mm-hmm. audits we do and sometimes we're like this person is still an admin on a page of you know mm-hmm. a multi-million dollar company or publicly che- like why yeah. oh we forgot we didn't even yeah. no one has asked that's a risk or a threat even the yeah. data that they have because yeah. then the private inbox yeah with such a thousands of customers yeah. sharing my name my id number my mm. background you know if it's a bank or a, mm. or a, you know a telco and and so on mm. so you have sort of some small risks like that online mm-hmm. that are just part of hygiene and just regular checks yeah. that sometimes go unsaid so mm. we do i don't feel clients bring this up sometimes they're like oh we think we should do this audit and they're like no 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 i want to do something else so mm. i feel like i'm selling a vitamin mm. instead of a painkiller because mm. yeah. they say they know what they want but i'm like i have this thing i think it's yeah. <laughs> or let yeah. me do this diagnosis before we recommend mm. not always a guarantee we get there mm. yeah 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 mm. and um earlier you were speaking about even you know clients wanting to do having conversations on whatsapp that's right <laughs> that's right yeah exactly and and uh and you know it's like let's start the project we're gonna form a whatsapp group and you're like okay okay and now decisions are being made their official communications is there mm. in fact i think um years ago i think it may be 2018 um you know at nendo we love to do experiments just on our own mm-hmm. with storytelling and so on so we had a run with some youtube videos and one of them we made was on um like the five types of whatsapp group everyone is in mm-hmm. and the one for work mm-hmm. just whatsapp replacing mm-hmm. email mm-hmm. in a way mm-hmm. now obviously you have teams and you've got slack and we use something called basecamp mm-hmm. because for me i'm really keen mm. on us being able to say oh we do work chat there mm. and i'm like what's up do whatever you want with that that's your friends your family your schoolmates your peers religious groups yeah. sports groups lo- lo- yeah boys you girls whatever it is friends etc because yeah. because now it's it's a space where both two are quite intertwined you know like intertwined mm. and so and so you have in some cases i've seen agencies uh and, and fellow peers where they're like oh they got like 10 15 different groups this mm. project that project mm. senior leaders and client decision makers mm. this and some groups are quiet but mm. there's a question there of and i don't know what happens when when it's 
you know because you can fake a whatsapp screenshot in mm-hmm. this day and age and mm-hmm. god knows we've seen it with some of the stuff we do in democracy and governance on the non-profit side where mm-hmm. people just uh you know be starting things like that mm-hmm. so i think i think it's murky territory but mm-hmm. the idea is people are doing what's most convenient mm-hmm. and most likely to get into whatsapp mm-hmm. but i feel like we're also getting to the point where you you end up spending so much time in this comms etc that sometimes i'm like when do we go back to email if yeah. if we can keep the inbox clean and mm-hmm. clear and yeah. formally documented mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah i think it really goes back and speaks to the whole thing about you know do we understand data privacy mm. really well or even what privacy is mm. the implications of not adhering to it mm-hmm. i think probably we get to understand the why it's so important mm. you know i think until something bad happens the surprise then we're like oh yeah. mm. okay so i yeah. needed to be more careful with that exactly. data mm-hmm. and i remember it's going to and and for organization i think um uh, especially local i think the, the the challenge also is uh, within the organization you find that the um, maybe the awareness the knowledge mm. rest on one person mm. Mm. so it's like that the, when the sales people are doing their thing yeah. they're not too aware about what needs to be done yeah. when the marketing people are doing their thing they're not too aware uh, what mm. needs to be done mm-hmm. so there's a place also where that needs to be disseminated across everybody mm. and then almost articulated for the different functions you do mm. or to be a bridge yeah. right so right now you might find that um, you want to do a project with this particular company uh head of marketing has given you the go ahead what do you need a database they have sent mm. at some point later um maybe legal comes in and like you did what mm. Mm. Yeah. what about you know that kind of thing yeah. so because they legal knows yeah. but nobody else knows yeah. in terms of exactly how does that spell out for everything i do on a daily basis yeah 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 absolutely mm. absolutely um i think it comes down to you know education and you know i think the office of, of the data privacy commission has a huge job mm. to educate the public mm. um and organizations um and they have started um Ray have told us you know they've been running some um workshops around the country but i think there's a lot for them to do um what are some of your ideas you know of how, what they can do how how they can how they can reach all the different sectors of people mm. who need to know about privacy we've talked about organizations that we work with your clients but we have you know those who are in the machinanis and mm. all of that they also need to be aware of what privacy is and what mm. how precious their data is what are some of your ideas on what they can improve to create okay. awareness i mean it's 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 quite a big one because the the law uh on data privacy is very encompassing in terms of it almost uh doesn't spare anybody uh, in terms of both individual and uh, institution especially because it's seeking to protect the 47 or so million Kenyans who are um, within its borders. So in that particular case if you're talking about then ensuring that everybody knows then that's a pretty tall order. I think what I sense they have done mm-hmm. is to tear their awareness. Mm-hmm. Tear it by starting with organizations before they get to uh the public on a full scale. Mm-hmm. Um I mean the prudence around that would be um there's no point of for example uh, uh informing the 47 million people mm-hmm. about their rights around data privacy at the same time mm-hmm. when for example the structures in place for recourse for example structures in place for implementation are not mm-hmm. there exactly i mean the example i gave earlier for example of um um uh the the, the lady who wants to pay for her groceries mm-hmm. at a local shop yeah. but doesn't want to be harassed by paying by digital payment mm-hmm. um i mean she may not know what recourse to do especially depending on um maybe your where you are in terms of um say income or awareness or mm-hmm. um how digitally connected you are she mm-hmm. may not know how to get to the website yes. to be able to make a complaint yeah um and maybe in terms of awareness is a place to be able to do it either by um key associations mm-hmm. or by key industries or by key sectors mm-hmm. uh because the key sectors once they have that in place as mm-hmm. we're saying um if the information currently sits in silos within my organization mm-hmm. uh it needs to be able to sit well across everybody within the organization so start with sectors organizations and then from there be able to ensure even the public knows so mm-hmm. start at my uh when i come and engage uh a mark mm-hmm. or mark is engaging me as an organization mm-hmm. he's already ensuring that there is compliance mm-hmm. and a bit of awareness creating in me who's he's engaging with yeah. and then by the time we have 47 million people now fully aware about their rights around data privacy mm-hmm. um even even the legal structures are there to be able to um to take it because right now it to be a flood yeah um to be able to do it yeah. but that's it i think they've done um i mean um i like the push also to have um the president also be able to um be a voice to it mm-hmm. um i think that happened was it last year uh, mm-hmm. did last year to be a voice towards 
um, ensuring that there's compliance mm -hmm. around this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as um, the larger companies did from the front, we've got the SMEs that are within the threshold also starting to follow, mm -hmm. but more importantly, that people start getting aware about what their rights are. Mm -hmm. Now what's making it, um, also so creating awareness, uh, maybe not from uh, a positive perspective, mm -hmm. is when they start now, when you start seeing the implementation of fines. Mm -hmm. When organizations are getting fined mm -hmm. or um, it's starting to cost yeah. uh, for non-compliance, mm -hmm. then that creates another source of awareness. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, I th I th the process is happening. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I took a peep at their website um, mm -hmm. um, before I talked today. Mm -hmm. I can see they're recruiting. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, in, in terms of for recruiting for compliance officers, mm -hmm. for people to um, help them with um, um, uh, procurement and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they're expanding. Yeah. Um, and for sure they need to expand. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would say my local chief needs to be able to know about what mm -hmm. data privacy is mm -hmm. so that, um, uh, so to speak, the the herdsman from mm -hmm. my village mm -hmm. can be able to uh, complain mm -hmm. when he sees his picture on a billboard somewhere yeah. taken because he uh, received a token from, mm -hmm. I don't know, company B. Yeah. So I think there's a place to also be able to ensure even them uh, the administrative infrastructure is also aware. So yeah. we're, we're not we're not speaking. Um, everybody, every every government institution is speaking to itself, mm -hmm. um, and then to the public. Yeah. They all speak to each other, yeah. um, and any enforcing authority is also very aware about that. Yeah. Right now, if I take a complaint to the police, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean they will almost be a bit lost for so. Mm. Mm. You know that kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not quite briefed on this. Yeah, we're not quite briefed yeah, on this. Yeah, quite mm. brief on this. I, I mean, maybe they are, but mm. I, 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 I mean, I have my doubts about it. But mm. anyway, there's a place to be able to tear it mm -hmm. and uh, to sector it yeah. in terms of awareness. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, mm. absolutely. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I think he said it pretty well. I think the there's the public first mm -hmm. there's the business first there's the grassroots mm -hmm. i think as as jonathan said really well mm -hmm. um i think for me there's also the question on with fines mm -hmm. and reporting and whistleblowing mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. and you know because there's questions on this you know like what's in it for me mm -hmm. and i think there's been very interesting questions and concerns when you look at tax as well mm -hmm. where there's all these you know anti-corruption hotlines mm -hmm. or tax whistleblowing sites so the question is mm -hmm. who is incentivized or motivated mm -hmm. to declare mm -hmm. about uh non-compliance mm -hmm. and is it the end consumer saying oh i think there's an infraction of mm -hmm. privacy here mm -hmm. Or is it a message all of its own? Because mm. as he said, it brings the PR. Mm. Uh, but the question is, like he said with the police, this idea of, okay, what do we do? And even I, I wonder, what about individual infractions around privacy? Mm -hmm. Right? Because we mm -hmm. talk very person, institution, institution, person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have situations like doxing, for instance, mm -hmm. which are where uh, you share uh, sort of, very private or personal information mm -hmm. uh, with intent to, to harm. Mm -hmm. um, and this could be, you know, somebody gets out on my bank balance and wants to, you know, mm -hmm. make me the joke of the day or something to that mm -hmm. effect or, or the opposite. Yeah. And sometimes it's interesting where I think even there's some reverse challenges like this where um, I see people then almost not, I wouldn't say doxing themselves, but giving a lot of information as part of, you know, I, I once saw this, mm -hmm. <laughs> this, uh, Twitter uh, thread with somebody saying, you know, share your, <laughs> share your account balance right now. And okay. and I was like, mm, I don't know if you want to do that because mm -hmm. if people can put it together, yeah. if you ever, let's say, tweeted Nairobi Water, Kenya Power, many of the utilities or your telco or bank, yeah. then now they know how much is in there. Yeah. You know, it's all these very mm -hmm. complex types of uh, social engineering that are there. Yeah. Um, and even there's these newer um, social media scams and types of fraud mm. that we've been writing about and trying to warn people on 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 how when we like the last uh, and it's this is one of our trends in in, in the report mm -hmm. there's been a decade plus of companies you know saying okay let's join online mm -hmm. now let's tell people to reach out to us online mm -hmm. and so they've spent money mm -hmm. to to build a behavior and then they spend money it, it in part with the belief that if the three of us are in a call center to play, pay us the wage, you know, we have to come in, clock mm -hmm. out, that there's, and even the, 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 the cost of the call mm -hmm. is connecting between consumer and, and, and corporation, especially if it's toll free, mm -hmm. there's all money to that. Mm -hmm. But if you tweet me mm -hmm. or you Facebook inbox me, oh, I think I can use a chatbot or AI or machines to help with such mm -hmm. instances and then have fewer people. 
Mm-hmm. So that was, I think, the working understanding. Mm-hmm. But now what's happening is that there are fraudsters who are faster than any of these corporates. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, a Hydra. You cut one here, another mm-hmm. one pops up there where they set up a name that looks like the brand. And with this chaos with blue ticks, gold ticks, they can set up almost mm-hmm. what look like legitimate mm-hmm. profiles. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how many people are falling victim. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, you know, smart, educated people who are just, they're just not glancing right. But mm-hmm. that doesn't, they don't see that that's not the name of the corporation. Because mm-hmm. you tweet publicly, mm-hmm. then somebody DMs you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, this guy's got to me quick this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're not careful or noticing, yeah. very soon, mm-hmm. you're like, pay this or do mm-hmm. that. Or you've just sent a prompt on your phone. Oh, okay, I can get it sorted that mm-hmm. quick. And no sooner than that happens, you've been hard. So I think yeah. the question here is, is this, I mean, even, you know, cases uh, where you have, you know, you know, two romantic partners or former mm-hmm. romantic partners and one shares intimate photos. So there's so many cases outside of, let's call them the very formal mm-hmm. ones where mm-hmm. for doxing, at least there are some cases in court that have shown that there's some jurisprudence for, for cases there. Yeah. Um, uh, but even there's corporate espionage as well that's that's there too mm-hmm. uh, with leaked documents given to bloggers to tarnish mm-hmm. a company or mm-hmm. it's a court case and they know you can't speak on a court case officially mm-hmm. on the record mm-hmm. and so they'll you know sully or soil the name of certain people in there mm-hmm. there's all sorts of i think situations like that and i wonder mm-hmm. now where the the office of the data you know privacy commissioner will will start and stop mm. is it the institution is it the public yeah. is it the chief mm. is it with any of these these smaller matters what you know what can be done yeah mm. yeah yeah wow so it's it's wide it covers a very wide broad base of people mm. it goes really deep into all those different layers of mm. um, activity you've talked about um but i think you know just from this discussion i think the key thing is that we have agreed on is a the Data Protection Act is necessary. Absolutely. Mm. Um, it is very, very timely, mm-hmm. um, but it'll take a while to implement and mm-hmm. to be cascaded across information-wise to yeah. all the relevant parties mm-hmm. and also implementation-wise. Absolutely. Well, especially to the to, to you and I, um, Kenyans. Mm. I mean, um, not necessarily for, um, coming from an institute perspective, but from um, an everyday perspective. Mm. I mean, um, um, you're sitting... Um, uh, seeing a bus, mm-hmm. and uh, um, then the um, guys asking, "What did you pay by Mpesa? Mm. Okay, what's your number? Zero seven three five. I mean, <laughs> yeah, everyone can hear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. get, getting aware about yeah. maybe now the, the place now to bring in technology. Yeah. How do you bring in um, maybe QR codes? Mm. So if you want to pay, okay, just present a QR code. Yeah. Or the QR code is you present it, you scan it, mm. that payment is made. Yeah. Uh, so no one is shouting out their number. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. 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 So yeah. there's there's work to be done. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's, it's it's positive right direction. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, I don't know if you had any closing remarks or any last mi- things you wanted to say uh, before we uh, close this podcast. Yeah, I think maybe for me it just goes back to how we started it, which is privacy is a great concept. I think we have a very intellectual understanding of it. But the more you go down to the ground or the more you look at the trade-offs, uh, there's, there's so many things. I mean, I remember uh, setting up two-factor authentication you know, with with some services and with some some colleagues, mm-hmm. and they're like, I have to do this every time. Yes, you have to do this every time. Mm-hmm. I mean, some companies every three months, if it's a work computer, it's going to kick you out and ask you to change your password. Yeah. Love it or hate it, that's just that's just the bare minimum of what they are talking about. Yeah. Uh, but but for, but for people, there's that friction that's mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at our personal or private lives, mm-hmm. I mean, I I was a little late to. Uh, two-factor authentication which is uh, for anyone who doesn't know is when you have multiple ways to check Mm -hmm. that you are the individual trying to log in so Mm -hmm. even for whatsapp Mm -hmm. because i saw a number of people who i knew and i was like how did how did you how did they catch you Mm -hmm. i'm like i know a lot about your phone you're such a prominent person Mm -hmm. in society Mm etc uh but yeah so so just having that and and i think it's it's one of those sort of what's the minimum standard Mm -hmm. and then you look at young people so you look at uh you know we did some work with the higher education loans board a couple Mm -hmm. years ago and it was such fascinating work because you turn 18 and you know to be very frank you know there's so many things happening at that time right Mm -hmm. uh on 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 the extremes uh you have okay let's get that care in that bank account and let's formalize the id Mm -hmm. and on the other side look sports betting companies are the 
either top one, top two, top three advertisers mm-hmm. in this country. Mm-hmm. And so even for a lot of even teens, it's not something we speak about enough. We've talked about it a lot in our uh, our various reports, how, mm-hmm. you know, sports betting's magnetism mm-hmm. uh, is, is unlike anything we've seen generationally. I think we, especially here, because like, this is a, a source of innovation and mm-hmm. so on. But second somebody gets that SIM card, your loan apps, your sports betting firms, and just fiscal responsibility, much less even understanding privacy. Mm-hmm. Pinyangu, mm-hmm. Siriangu. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have people who are signing up for the KRA pin. We did some work over the years with cyber cafes. And, you know, cyber cafes are helping you register on Facebook mm-hmm. and helping you. You're on yeah. a shared computer for one. Yeah. And in some cases, they're like, look, this QWERTY keyboard for me is a bit intimidating. Mm-hmm. So I need you to type it for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, when were you born? And this, this, that. Mm-hmm. Where, where did you exactly. So this yeah. person, mm-hmm. the cyber cafe attendant in some cases, the level of privacy that they have mm-hmm. and access. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's obviously some very extreme scenarios for that too, you know, uh, good and bad. But, yeah. but for me, I think there's... You know, we've talked about it at this table, but as Jonathan was saying, the grassroots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how do I go to the chief and yeah. talk about this stuff? Yeah. Or how do I even figure out the, you know, the essentials yeah. of privacy for me yeah. at an individual level? Or privacy as a minor. I mm-hmm. mean, in research, there's some really, really clear guidelines mm-hmm. on, you know, parental consent or just not touching any 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 uh, information for people under the age of 18. Mm-hmm. It's a bit murkier mm-hmm. when you're going digital. Mm-hmm. Cause like we've talked about places like TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some content on there we were saying in one of our little breaks that for me is not suitable for minors like you know people under the age of 18 um and and these are conversations we sort of need to have but Mm. you know is it a very intellectual thing or how do we get practical or as people say qua grounds Mm. because that's really where i think it'll matter in the next Mm. year yeah Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I guess mine is, uh, I mean, two. One, uh, th- I think for organizations, institutions, is a place to be able to um, uh, be proactive around uh, seeking compliance. Mm-hmm. Um, because I guess you can't say, I do know there's, there's a law around this. Mm-hmm. Be proactive. Mm-hmm. I mean, figure out how do you um, get your organization to be compliant and to um, get the right uh, certifications. Mm-hmm. I guess from now, the, the perspective of the consumer, there's a place to be able to be aware about the amount of information um, that you that, that, that there is around you mm-hmm. even before you speak it mm. before you even ask a question and uh, start taking control of that yeah. and how to take control of that um, figuring out what have you opted to mm-hmm. um, uh, opting I mean the time I tried I actually started cleaning out my uh, my Gmail from things that subscribed and I just realized oh now I'm actually getting um, fewer emails per day mm-hmm. which are more relevant mm-hmm. so even I've been able to clean out and uh, opt out yeah. uh, from places you don't need to be mm-hmm. um, I think allows you to also be able to be in control mm-hmm. around the information that you're sharing mm-hmm. and also people are collecting around you yeah. uh, as well yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. and just in closing actually one of the things we didn't uh, define is when you talk about data or information mm-hmm. maybe one of you can just speak on what is that you know because we think maybe it's just phone number name ID mm-hmm. But there's a whole lot more. So maybe just as a closing, you know, to tie it all together, what's this data information we're talking about that people need to protect mm-hmm. and organizations need to, you know, protect as well? Well, I think the, the, the and I'd love Jonathan to wait, I think there's what he really eloquently captured as the personally identifiable aspects mm. that are both enshrined in the constitution in terms of you have there are some rights that 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 the you know the the, the country the republic of kenya affords you on the basis of that mm. and then i think in this internet age the challenge is just that people are very willingly you know putting first name last name there are some places where people are pseudonymous etc mm. but the second you bring any sort of device i mean you know like with with the, I mean I'm I'm here I've got my notes for the podcast on this. It doesn't surprise me because we've seen this type of data when we're doing some of our digital work that you track every tap, mm. every swipe, mm. every every time that somebody's idle, mm. right? And uh, you know with some of the web, uh, you know tracking and analytics you can do. Uh, you have heat maps. Mm. Your mouse hovered here. We got to redesign that part. Too many people are getting stuck there in the, yeah. or in the form. People are dropping off at this point, which is mm. what what he was saying about how you design the tool. Mm. So. Honestly, the, the thing with data now is that we can't squeeze the toothpaste back in the tube. Mm-hmm. It's it's so much, yeah. but at the most essential 
there is your name uh your id number mm-hmm. i mean this is why identity is such a mm-hmm. big question mm-hmm. right passport do we have huduma number do we have mm-hmm. a central number mm-hmm. you have a number at you know on your birth certificate mm-hmm. you have a number you know on all these different either mm-hmm. government services mm-hmm. there's the e citizens of the world and so on and so you have all of this disparate set of data mm-hmm. first name last name further mm-hmm. information id number as well mm-hmm. um phone number 2 which feels like it should be for Kenya and for mm. mobile money markets classified closely mm-hmm. so i wouldn't even know when to start yeah, or stop you yeah. know with with the definition yeah that's true that's mm. true yeah mm. so yes i mean so i mean if you think about you so what is your name mm. what's your age what's mm. your marital status mm. um things now i mean that already in itself identifies you yeah um so when it comes to aspects like um what's your height what's your what are your preferences mm. um Uh, other personal information but then also now when uh, as is mentioning now with additional tools mm-hmm. um i can be able to also identify you based on your email address for example or based on um your digital footprint mm-hmm. or based on your credit card number mm-hmm. or based on your gps location yeah. i mean it's, it may not be obvious when i say gps location yeah but if i did a bit more to that i'll still be able to identify you yeah, so that's the... all part of personal information yeah. that helps me know this is you know yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and also face and the face and the voice and the voice and the voice actually yeah. i mean voice is normally one that um gets me often where uh, we give example of there's some politicians mm-hmm. when they speak mm-hmm. you don't even need to be told that's them and you see that that's unique to them yeah so even voices becomes a uh, unique identifier yeah your thumbprint yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. wow mm. excellent thank you so much for your time and uh, for sharing your experience your insights and your thoughts um, on this podcast we really appreciate um, you being here it's a pleasure thank, thank you, you. Mm.